afternoon, comrades. Uh, firstly, I would like to, on behalf of Paul McAleer, the Oceanic Zone Coordinator, send his fraternal solidarity to uh, this assembly and to the delegates. Unfortunately, uh, Paul, Paul flew over here. Uh, our delegation uh, here today consists of uh, 11 MUA members, uh, both from uh, uh, Sydney branch and the Queensland branch of the MUA. Uh, the Sydney branch flew over to Liverpool last week to uh, involve itself in the uh, conference that was held uh, on behalf of the Liverpool Dockers. Uh, and it was unfortunately uh, the situation that Paul had uh, received a call from his wife uh, and he had to urgently uh, go back to Australia. But uh, he sends his solidarity, comrades. Uh, and on behalf of the NUA delegation and uh, the branch secretary of Queensland also, Steve Cumberlege, and myself, the delegates. Unfortunately, uh, Paul, Paul flew over here. Uh, our delegation uh, here today consists of uh, 11 MUA members, uh, both from uh, uh, Sydney branch and the Queensland branch of the MUA. Uh, the Sydney branch flew over to Liverpool last week to uh, involve itself in the uh, conference that was held uh, on behalf of the Liverpool Dockers. Uh, and it was unfortunately uh, the situation that Paul had uh, received a call from his wife uh, and he had to urgently uh, go back to Australia. But uh, he sends his solidarity, comrades. Uh, and on behalf of the NUA delegation and uh, the branch secretary of Queensland also, Steve Cumberlege and myself, we uh, send you a warm uh, fraternal uh, thanks and solidarity to uh, the uh, SEAL President. I firstly would like to acknowledge and pay my respects uh, to Antonio Mariano, uh, to Antonio's officers uh, of SEAL, the delegates here today and the rank and file most importantly. To the IDC General Coordinator, Comrade Jordi Aragundi. You're a dear friend, uh, and it was in 2015 that through the struggle with the Hutchison lockout, both in Sydney and Queensland, that our unions, our branches, uh, contacted the IDC. Uh, we spoke to Jordi. And without question, he said, the IDC is there alongside you. To all the zone coordinators, to the affiliates of the IDC, to all you delegates of the affiliates, and to the rank and file, most importantly, the MUA sends its fraternal uh, solidarity. Uh, I'm going to speak today about uh, automation and outsourcing on the waterfront in Australia. It is the most significant attack on dock workers the world over, uh, the likes never seen before. And for the last 15 years in Australia, we've had a position. We will negotiate with the employers on automation. And for 15 years, we have seen the dismantling, the removal of our jobs. We've uh, delivered very, very good outcomes, but the last wave of automation which has been announced means that we would see, uh, within a handful of years, the extinction of the waterfront in Australia, the removal of waterside workers, wharfies as we call them, dock workers work, uh, if we don't stop that. Uh, the union formed a view 
during this last round of bargaining on the waterfront with both DP World and Hutchison, which is still ongoing. It's been about 18 months with uh, long lengths of industrial action and bans and limitations. Uh, and it was out of, and at this period, that the union made the determination that we will not accept automation anymore. The MUA automation paper will be uh, sent through to each affiliate and it, it outlines this position. The rapid escalation of automated port processes is continuing across the world and is acute in Australia. This ongoing development of port and container terminal automation and the rise of advanced technologies has given employers the opportunity to systematically displace human beings and replace them with machines and algorithm-driven pro computer programs. It is mostly being aimed at higher wage unionised operations where the predominant cost of stevedoring is viable, a variable capital in the form of wages. The potential impact for workers is mass unemployment. We live in the age of automation and technology, but we ask, why should robots and machines be used in a way that does not contribute to any positive social development besides reducing a worker's standing, the standard of living. The only gain is for employers who make huge profits at the expense of their redundant workforces. It's a short-sighted approach that ne neglects people, our communities and our society. It is not a pro-human or pro-community view of the world. It is not a union view of the world. The recent meetings of the MUA Waterfront Commissions met to discuss automation and technology questions in detail. The threat to workers' jobs and economic and social impacts on the community are very real. Automation and technology are being used for personal private gain at the expense of the community. Automated terminals are objectively less productive and consequently offer few social benefits to our communities. They offer even less opportunities and benefits to workers. They offer no opportunities for our children. This position paper will direct the MUA in our responses to employers who are seeking to automate functions on the Australian waterfront. It will be the industrial basis of how the MUA is dealing with this question. The MUA automation paper outlines this. Number one, no fully automated terminals will be established or fully automated equipment deployed. Fully automated Fully automated for the purpose of this clause refers to machinery equipment including driverless and artificial intelligence controlled and operated machinery or equipment devoid of human interaction in the operation of machine or equipment control or exemption functions. Number two, no introduction of semi-automated terminals or technology except by agreement by both parties prior to the implementation. There will be no loss of jobs due to automation or technological change. No existing or future terminal machinery, equipment, terminal operating systems or terminal access and entry gates will be operated by remote control outside of the terminal area to the exclusion of the workers covered by the collective agreements. All terminal machinery 
and operating systems shall be operated and covered by workers under those agreements. This includes all non-management roles within the terminal, which includes mechanical maintenance. Therefore, the MUA shall have coverage of all new roles, classifications, categories and or jobs that are created as a result of automation or technological change despite change in the way the function is carried out as a result of automation or technological change. All roles in connection with terminal operating systems and equipment will be covered by workers under these stevedore agreements. Comrades, we have, after 15 years, a situation on the Australian waterfront whereby in three of our major ports, some form of automation. In Brisbane, the three terminals are opera operated under a semi-automated system. In Sydney, two of the three terminals has semi-automated machines. Uh, the third terminal, which is DP World, which has 700 workers, the Sydney branch stopped the automation and maintained the 700 jobs in the last four-year contract. That was four years ago, and we will continue to do the same. In Melbourne, Victoria, under a Conservative government, they uh, uh, issued a, uh, a contract for ICTSI to develop a, uh, a greenfield site for full automation. That terminal operates today. The MUA organised with every other workplace that we uh, control on the waterfront of Melbourne and walked off and shut the port down when one of the shop stewards the delegates in the ICTSI terminal was sacked. The MUA has now been sued for 100 million Australian dollars. I say that so as to understand in this uh, assembly the laws under ne neoliberalism and the lengths by which the Conservative capital forces will continue against the interests of the working class. We will fight that as we fight in every area when it comes to the defence of our members. The fully automated terminal in Melbourne, uh, when it comes to clerical work and security work, is being conducted in the Philippines as we speak. Another union did a deal. The Australian Maritime Officers Union did a deal with the company for a collective agreement. We call that a scab agreement. Only the MUA has collective agreements on the waterfront. Only the MUA looks after waterside workers, wharfies in Australia. And we will organise and reorganise to make sure that that becomes our side. It is a difficult question when it comes to automation, but not difficult as a docker. We took this paper across the country, we spoke to our members in the Sydney branch and all the workplaces, and it was endorsed unanimously to defend our right to work. And I'm proud to say our members are prepared to fight and do whatever it takes. Comrades, the neoliberal agendas with the, uh, the, uh, the laws that are put in place to restrict our ability to defend the working class, not just our members, not just dockers, but the working class through organised labour, has seen the hyper-regulation on workers and their unions in Australia and the deregulation on the forces of capital. We see that across the world. We're going to see that accelerate. And in Australia, 
These laws whereby they are designed industrially to bankrupt unions, the Conservative government uh, that uh, is in power now has in front of Parliament a bill. It is known as the Ensuring Integrity Bill. This bill will criminalise union activity. It has the ability to put union officials and organisers and officers in jail, shop stewards and activists. Uh, the likelihood is that this bill will, go, will be passed and we will see a different stage in uh, class struggle in Australia. This bill also has the power to remove a democratic leader of a union, black ban them from ever holding office in any union again, and this law gives the power of the government to install a administrator of the state to run that union. This bill was introduced because of the MUA. The MUA is part of a new union that was formed, voted on by our membership, with the CFMEU. The CFMEU represents construction workers, one division. Forestry, manufacturing, another division. Mining, energy and maritime. And with the amalgamation of this new union, democratically elected, we see the forces of the state taking on militant trade unions with laws like this. This is a law unlike any that's ever, a uh, bill that's ever been presented to Parliament in Australia's uh, recent history. Comrades, also, I am heartened to hear the uh, report from Kenny Riley in regards to that support and solidarity in regards to the OLW and the, uh, the decision handed down in the courts from the same company that we're being sued by, the MUA, ICTSI. Uh, in the conference in Liverpool, it was resolved that uh, that we would support the ILWU. We uh, formulated a resolution that dockers of the world, maritime unions, and like mine unions convene a global response in support of the ILWU. I will read that resolution out a little later. But I want to firstly say this. I am heartened to hear that there is also going to be structural changes to the leadership of the IDC. In a union like ours, we see the changing nature of class struggle that requires all unions to address the issues uh, that we are faced with so as to advance the interests of our membership, their families and our communities. Geordie's com contribution has been welcomed by dockers all over the world and has been uh, demonstrative of his tireless advocacy and championing of our cause. It has not been obvious, the strain, that working two full-time jo full jobs has had on him as he has selflessly committed himself to the task. However, it is impossible to ignore the reality of the difficulties with uh, constantly being in two places at the same time. A working docker looking after the interests of a global rank and file organisation as the IDC. 
given the significant increase in membership and the continued growth of the organisation under Geordie's leadership, it is essential that our organisation reflects the institutional requirements and supports the leadership group so as not to destroy that leadership and allow our IDC to maximise its full potential. The creation of a full-time general coordinator role is a positive reflection of the current and future needs of the IDC. And, it is, and if it is economically viable, we should do so. It should be unanimously supported and endorsed. It is essential that the IDC is able to resource the global campaigns that we need to develop an institute to ensure we have jobs on the waterfront into the future. Neoliberalism is wiping tens of thousands of organised dockers off the map and the IDC is capable of utilising the potential and capacity of all our affiliates to overcome these assaults. Our leadership must be resourced and capable of living up to the great leverage of our global movement. The great strength of the IDC is rank and file dollars. Ownership of our destiny. Geordie exemplifies that spirit. And it must be continued in a meaningful and practical way. A suggestion could be to create an honorary role that must be democratically elected from rank and file dockers community a working docker, not a former docker or an officer of a docker's union, but a currently working docker from an affiliated IDC union who could become the honorary leader of our movement. This role could be a presiding officer, as we would put it in Australia, or international president of the IDC, uh, general president, international chair, the name doesn't matter. What is important is the role and responsibilities. Who will be responsible for ensuring the leadership group and coordinators are fully uh, fulfilling their platform of the IDC in an independent and transparent manner and continuously tied to the rank and file dockers and all our affiliates. Uh, yesterday, the candidacy of Dennis Daggett was mentioned for the leadership of the IDC. This is a strong candidacy. Dennis has been instrumental in the ILA delivering leadership on delivering job security and jurisdiction along with safety, crucial issues to dockers globally. <coughs> the leadership of the ILA around negotiating against outsourcing and automation is perhaps some of the strongest collectively bargained outcomes in the world and Dennis Daggett's leadership of the IDC will ensure that these fights and struggles become prominent campaigns of the global dockers movement. I wish him all the best in this regard and look forward to working with him if he is elected. Comrades, as I said in the, uh, in the report, there was a resolution uh, that came out of the Liverpool conference last week in support of the ILWU. And it reads as this, comrades. The Liverpool conference resolution of solidarity and support for the ILWU. This conference resolves a worldwide meeting of dockers, seafarers, port workers and other like-minded unions will be organised, place to be determined. This meeting will be to discuss the plight of the ILWU. We cannot let one of our unions go bankrupt. 
We stand with the ILWU in respect to the vicious attacks on our ILWU brothers and sisters to take away and destroy this great union. The ILWU has been at the forefront of struggle for many workers and their unions around the world. We stand in solidarity with them industrially, politically, financially and socially, whatever it takes. That was moved by National President of the Maritime Union of Australia, Christy Kane, seconded by John Lynch, Liverpool Senior Shop Steward. John is in the, uh, uh, in the delegation here today. So that's my report, my report, Comrade Chair.